In this video, we'll learn how to add parameters to a custom function in P5.js. Parameters let us control and customize the behavior of our functions. So in my example here, I've already set up a custom function called self-portrait, and I'm using that to draw my self-portrait on the screen. You can see in my draw loop, I'm calling that function on line eight. Now, what I'd like to do here is introduce some interactivity to my function and introduce some control to where on the screen those shapes are drawn. You can see right now, I'm just drawing static shapes all in the same place because I'm using static coordinate values in all of my shape function calls. So the behavior that I'm aiming for is to have my self-portrait follow the mouse. And I'd like to be able to uh, say something in that function call, like draw the self-portrait at the mouse X and mouse Y location. So just to sort of frame out what I'm thinking, my function call would look something like this. So I'd be passing in two arguments, the horizontal and vertical location of the mouse, and that would then determine the relative location of each of the shapes, making up my self-portrait. So to create parameters in a function, all we do is add local variables inside the parentheses within our function definition. So here where I'm declaring function self-portrait, I can set up two variables. So I'm gonna call these uh, something unique. So I'll call it PX and PY. So for portrait X and portrait Y. So those will set up local variables and that means they'll only exist inside of my function definition block. When I call that self-portrait function, whatever two numbers I pass through the arguments will flow into the function parameters and then down into the code where I'll need to set up some relationships so that the parameters actually affect what's being drawn on screen. So let's just take this first ellipse call, for example, that is rendering the shirt. Now we could simply swap out PX and PY, and now I can see through that function call, I'm passing in the mouse X and mouse Y locations. That's flowing into the function definition. And then in turn, I'm using those local variables to control the center point of that ellipse. Now, of course, uh, I still need to make sure that I'm preserving the relative locations of all of the shapes that are making up my self-portrait. I don't want everything stacked right on top of that mouse X and mouse Y location. Otherwise, it's not going to look the way I want it to. Uh, so I need to do some adjustment here uh, to make sure everything is going to stay in its right place, but still follow the mouse. So I'm going to hit undo a couple times here uh, to back up. And there's basically two different strategies that I could take to make sure that my portrait follows the mouse. So for either option, I need to think about what is the, the center of the screen. Right now, uh, this portrait is centered on my canvas. And I can see in my setup block, I'm making a canvas that's 360 pixels wide by 640 high. Uh, so my center, and I'll just make a little comment with a note here, my center is going to be at 180x and 370y. So to make my shapes draw you know, in their correct relative locations, one strategy I could do is go through each of the horizontal coordinate numbers and subtract 180 from it, and go through each of the vertical coordinate numbers and subtract 370. So for example, uh, right now where I have 189, uh, I can subtract 180 from that. That leaves me with nine. And I would say PX plus nine. So basically I am going through each shape, figuring out what is the offset from the center of the screen and adding that to the local PX and local PY coordinates. So I can do the same thing here. So 604 minus 370 is 234. And I would say PY plus 234. And this will start to make a little bit more sense uh, once we get multiple shapes set up. So now you can see both the shape that are making up the shirt and the collar are staying in the correct places relative to one another uh, because of those adjustments that I've made in my code. So obviously this is a more tedious approach. I would have to go through every single shape and do those offsets uh, to make sure that everything's gonna be in its right place. The advantage to that is gonna make it easier uh, to adjust things like the scale if I wanted to. In this case, I think I'm gonna take a slightly different approach and just offset everything all at once. So I'll hit undo a few times here uh, to get back to my static number coordinates. And so my plan in this second approach is rather than adjusting the coordinate locations of each individual shape, I'm just gonna take the whole coordinate system and use the translate function to shift it where it needs to be. So I'll start with a push function call, and this will make a temporary coordinate system that we can use to do our translate. 
next line I'll translate px minus 180, py minus 370. Then all the way down at the bottom of my self-portrait function, I'll make sure to do the pop function call. That's going to get rid of our temporary coordinate system. So now you can see I'm using that translate to just shift everything uh, the right amount horizontally and vertically. And that gives me an interactive self-portrait. I can place it wherever I want on the screen just by moving the mouse around. And of course, you could imagine doing the same thing uh, with a touch location if you were working on a mobile device. This is just scratching the surface of what we can do with function parameters. We can pass in any kind of information that we want. It doesn't have to be uh, numeric. It doesn't have to represent the spatial coordinates. It can really be anything. So making custom function definitions and combining with parameters really gives you the best of both worlds. It helps keep your code modular, easy to read, easy to manage, less prone to errors, but still really customizable and still really capable of very sophisticated behaviors.